In this video we're going to be talking about the driver weight limit in Formula 1 and why it is vital that that is capped at a certain limit because over the last couple of years especially certain drivers have been doing extreme diets, extreme things whilst racing to make sure they're not carrying as much weight whilst they're going around on track at a weekend and many drivers, especially the taller ones, have been asked to cut a lot of weight to try and fit to the driver and car limit which is combined as of right now but going into 2019 it's going to be separated to the driver and the car are weighed separately and both of them have a minimum weight that they must uh, oblige to. This in the past has caused a lot of issues with drivers being pushed to the extreme to lose weight. Whilst at Toro Rosso, Carlos Sainz was told to lose 3 or 4 kilograms to be competing at his maximum, even though that might have been lower than what he would have normally felt natural. While some drivers like Max Verstappen were still physically growing at that same time, so he was coming to Formula 1 or 18, 19 years of age, and of course you aren't like a fully developed person at that age, you're still developing as a person, so it was very hard for Max Verstappen in his first couple of years in Formula 1 especially to sort of hit that weight limit because he was he was struggling because he was developing he was getting taller and obviously he was getting more muscle as you do when you get older and he was really struggling to get to that low weight limit because when the drivers are weighed with the car of course the driver can cut weight and it will help the car as well the, the car can run heavier if the driver is lighter if that makes any sense to reach the the minimum combined weight limit a few seasons ago John Eric Verne said that they should really discuss this minimum weight limit that's being implemented in for 2019 they should really discuss this and maybe that was the start of this discussion because when you're being forced to lose all of this weight it really does start to affect the driver and of course you're sort of starving yourselves of rich proteins and some core foods to try and get to that low weight and of course when the weight is combined with the car if you have an overweight car you can have a you know slightly lighter driver and it will sort of compensate out uh, but of course some you know some teams are obviously pushing it to the limit they want to include as much in the car as possible meaning it's inevitable that the car might come on a bit overweight meaning the driver needs to lose that weight and of course this uh, this does cause certain other scary scenarios an extreme case a couple of years ago was that Adrian Suttle the then Sauber driver didn't eat for two days to try and get to the weight limit that the Sauber team asked him for he wasn't helped by the Sauber being a car that was massively overweight anyway, but he's a tall driver as well, which is something that's very tough because in Formula 1 tall drivers automatically are going to be a little bit heavier because of the extra height. And it was really hard for Adrian Sutter to get to the, the low weight limit that Sauber were asking him for. And when you're being forced basically to not eat for two days, to basically starve yourself for a couple of days to get out a few kilograms, it's really, really crazy. I mean, that must have been quite close to the start of a season because I can't imagine him being asked to do it at the start of the winter, for example, of the, the winter prior, and then suddenly doing this. It wouldn't make much sense because you could easily, not easily, but you could gradually lose weight over a winter. But this must have been a thing just before pre-season testing, for example. They were like, you need to lose this weight because our car's overweight and we're going to struggle otherwise. They ended up struggling anyway in what, 2015. That Saab wasn't a very competitive car, but you know it, it kind of been helped that that car was massively overweight and the drivers were obviously struggling to get down to a low weight limit to try and help it out. I think that really this should be monitored. This sort of tactic should be monitored. Even though I'm a fan of Adrian Sittel, there's I don't think you should be forced to starve yourself to try and get to a weight limit. I guess if there was more time, as we said, he probably could have lost that weight a bit more gradually, but. I think maybe the FIA should have monitored this a bit sooner because we didn't really know this until I think midway through this season. Marcus Ericsson came out and said that he has had a drinks water bottle throughout his career and that's trying to save weight as well. And the way he was compensating for not having any uh, water supply through the race was basically drinking a load before the start of a race and then hoping that's going to last the round. So I'm not going to lie, I sort of have seen Marcus Ericsson sometimes does sort of fall off at the end of races and do you think that's something to do with it if he doesn't have that supply of water throughout I feel like well just inevitably you are going to really start struggling you aren't getting that fluid coming through your body I mean drivers are losing like three or four kilos throughout a race anyway because it's so physically demanding and if you're not getting that supply of well I guess nutrients and water coming through as well it's going to be very tough for a driver to perform at their max by the end of a race 
And also it's interesting to note Lewis Hamilton came out and said that he thinks that going into next season he's going to be even more competitive, he's going to be even faster because he's going to be able to put on the muscle he feels like he naturally should have. He's actually cut a lot of the muscle that he thinks that he would have normally had to try and get down to a weight limit to sort of equal it out with the car as well. And I think that Lewis Hamilton, I think, yeah, if he can get more muscle in you know, his body, if he, he can get stronger throughout, he's going to be basically just dominating everyone it's going to be a pretty incredible season if if, uh, if that does really happen because Lewis Hamilton says that he's going to be a completely different athlete going into next season which is going to be a scary thing if he's already doing incredible things in a car that probably isn't the fastest on the grid what's he going to do when he when he's even better basically as a racing driver he's even physically more up for it so I think it's good that the, the FIA have really put in this weight limit because Otherwise, drivers might not be able to push their, I guess, body to what they really think they can do. And if you're asked to cut so much, cut, 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 it really is going to be tough for a driver to perform at their best throughout a race, throughout a month of racing, throughout a season of racing. It's going to be very tough for a driver to perform throughout if their body isn't naturally maybe how it should be. So this rule going into 2019 should be really good. It's going to help out drivers like Hulkenberg, for example, tall drivers on the grid. Hopefully Esteban Ocon's on the grid, but he's another tall driver as well. But you've got to think that this should be a great leveller in a lot of ways. It should mean that however tall you are, however muscular you are, it doesn't really make a difference at the end of the day because you're all capped to, I think it's an 80 kilogram minimum weight limit, which is kind of interesting because I've lost a lot of weight over the last year and a half and I weigh, I think it was a 73, 74 kilos now, I put a bit on over summer, um, but I weigh 73, 74, a couple of, just over a year ago I weighed nearly 100 kilos and I don't know how I put back on that 6 or 7 kilos to get me to the 80 kilogram limit and I'm quite tall on what, 6 foot 1, 6 foot 2 and I, I honestly don't know, I, I guess Maybe maybe work out the chicken arms a little bit, but let's be honest, I don't know how I would do that quite quickly. I mean, obviously you'd have a personal trainer to help you out, but for me, I don't know how, how that would help me, because I, I don't know how I would gain that weight to get to the, the minimum weight limit. I don't know how I would do it, but then I guess these guys, Formula 1 drivers, they're going to have the trainers, they're going to have all the help to get to that weight limit, and I'm sure some drivers might struggle to gain weight in a way, so it might be interesting to see if any drivers come in overweight uh, sorry, underweight at the start of pre-season testing and are forced to maybe eat a few Happy Meals before the start of a season. So this minimum weight limit should enable all drivers to put on a bit more muscle, um, hopefully not any more extra fat, but hopefully extra muscles, the, the, I guess in taking more of the core ingredients to make them a more um, well, more of an athlete in a way. I mean, they're all still athletes, don't get me wrong, but when you can have a bit more weight to play with, it's, an, it's inevitable that you can push yourself to go even further. Um, I don't really watch boxing, but I assume it's like that. The heavier weight classes can last longer. Maybe not, I don't know. But I feel like it's something like that. If you, you, know, if you can put on more muscle and basically last for a longer duration, if you can have better... Uh, cardio and training throughout the the winter and basically come out come out the the winter as a more more of an athlete. I think it's gonna be really interesting to see which drivers come out on top because we see someone like Lewis Hamilton and they're very physically different to someone like Sebastian Vettel, for example. They're obviously two of the the best on the grid right now. Many would argue the two best on the grid right now. But if you looked at them physically, I feel like Hamilton is much more muscular and Sebastian Vettel was probably more of a cardio guy. I don't know, that's maybe just me looking at it from the outside. That could be completely wrong, but that's what I just see from the outside. So maybe this weight limit might affect Vettel more than it does Hamilton going into 2019. So it's going to be very interesting. But this whole rule is incredibly vital, I think, because it doesn't... Basically now, equals out that playing field. It means that all the drivers can get to this weight limit and they don't have to worry so much because in the past when they're weighed you know, together, when they're combined together the two weights, it really can make the team force the driver to do things that they shouldn't really be having to do. And it should mean going to 2019 we see all of the drivers more as a performance athletes and maybe over a race weekend we can see maybe a few temps faster in qualifying, maybe 10 seconds quicker over a race distance. It's going to be really interesting to see. And I know Marcus Eriksson isn't racing next season because he's the Sauber reserve driver, but it would have been really interesting to see whether he would have felt a difference throughout a race, having that sort of fresh water supply throughout. Maybe Hulkenberg never has a fresh water supply throughout a race either. I don't really know. That's something that hasn't really been confirmed.
So going forward in Formula 1, I think it's fantastic that the FIA have sort of clarified that this will be a rule going forward because, of course, it would have been the, to the detriment of some people's health in the future of Formula 1 if they're pushing themselves to the extreme to make a, a sort of a, a fantasy weight limit in a way. So this is great by the FIA. It's a tiny rule, but it could make a massive difference in races. It was seen drivers being more of a performance athlete. I mean, I'm not saying they're not already, but I'm saying even more of a performance athlete and be able to last longer in races and be able to just sort of do the same lap time, lap after lap after lap because they're physically able to. I think that's going to be really, really interesting to see and I want to see which driver benefits the most from it. Do you think it's going to be someone like Lewis Hamilton? I don't know. Do you think it's going to be the muscular guys that maybe go faster or get better throughout a race? Or do you think it's the guy that can do more cardio and have more, uh, I don't know, just more fitness throughout a race distance, I guess that's maybe something that might help as well. So, it's a really, really interesting rule that's come in, and I think it's really, really important, it's vital really, that this was introduced, otherwise some drivers would be at a disadvantage for their whole career, and uh, maybe we'll see someone like Nico Hulkenberg really gain from this as well, because obviously a taller driver might have struggled to get to a weight limit, I mean, inevitably he's going to be maybe 5 kilograms heavier than someone like Carl Sainz, who's teammate is this season, and uh, going forward, uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Hulkenberg, that could be a bit closer now because of the uh, the weight limit introduced because obviously Hulkenberg won't be as much of a disadvantage because of his weight. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, I originally found this idea because I was, this is kind of weird, I originally lost my weight from about, just under 100 kilos down to what, 73. I did that to fit into a race suit that I bought, and you might see it from my Instagram page. It's a Williams Martini race suit from Adrian Suttle in 2015. It's his actual race suit in 2015. Sorry, actual test suit from 2015. I think he must have only used them in the simulator sessions, but that's the reason I lost that weight. I lost what, over 20 kilos and nearly 30 kilos to fit into that race suit, and then I wanted to understand how how heavy was Adrian Suttle when he used this race suit. So then I looked into how heavy he was, and he's actually a couple of kilograms heavier than I am right now, which is quite interesting. Of course, he's probably got a lot more muscle than me, um, but that maybe found an article about Adrian sort of starving himself for two days to get himself uh, down to a weight limit, and I was like, wait a second, this, this is crazy, and then I sort of stumbled across the, a few articles here and there about this rule going into 2019 that not many people have been talking about, and I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this rule does affect drivers because Adrian Suttle, maybe if he was still in Formula 1, he might be someone that really would benefit from a rule like this. And uh, maybe there's a bit more pressure now on the, the guys back at the factory to make sure the car is a certain weight because I think a lot of the time drivers um, are comp like they're compensating for an overweight car. So maybe next year we're going to be seeing teams push even harder to make sure that car is as light as possible. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching, hopefully you did enjoy it, hopefully you enjoyed my little story about why I lost weight, but um, it's a weird motivation I know to fit into a race suit, but it really, really helped me, it helped me become um, a, just a bit more motivated about doing exercise, and I look at my karting results over the last year, and they've been much, much better, and if you want to watch the karting series, by the way, it's on my second channel, it's going to continue over there, so... Yeah, be sure to uh, check that out on the second channel. Thank you as always for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please remember to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you're new. It's Alex and I'm out of here. Goodbye.